Phyllis, that you've just come from the United Nations to the studio, where I understand a very high level investigative report into what happened in Gaza this winter has just been released. You know, as you know, Laura, there have been a host of reports from human rights organizations, Amnesty International, other UN agencies, the Arab League, uh, the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in the Occupied Territories, Professor Richard Falk. Uh, uh, many reports have already come out. The one that was released today by Justice Richard Goldstone, the eminent South African judge, uh, was the one everyone was waiting for. This was the report that was mandated by the Human Rights Committee of the United Nations uh, and is in many ways the most comprehensive. It's a 550 page long report. Only the executive summary, which is itself 40 or 50 pages long, was released. Uh, physically, they didn't even have it yet. It had only been finished in the drafting stages around midnight last night. What Justice Goldstone told us, though, and what we're seeing in the summaries, what's so important about this report, I think, is two things. One is how comprehensive it is. It, it, it goes into much more detail and covers all of the various kinds of violations uh, that were alleged to be committed by Israel. It also includes violations of international humanitarian law that were allegedly committed by the Palestinians in, in the firing mm -hmm. of the rockets. But what's particularly important about it, I think, beyond the comprehensiveness, is that it focuses in its recommendations on making real what Justice Goldstone said has been a history of impunity. That he said, we must be rejoicing that we live in a world where there is no longer impunity for countries committing these violations. Na so that's why it's so important. Naomi Klein, speaking on Democracy Now! yesterday, talked about the Israeli <coughs> refusal to participate in Judge yes. Goldstone's investigation. <coughs> Could their rejectionism serve to discredit the report in some way? Not at all. In fact, Justice Goldstone spoke to that. One of the things that his team did was to hold public hearings not only in uh, Gaza, uh, they were not allowed into the West Bank, they were not allowed into Israel. The Israelis refused. But they held open hearings, uh, public hearings, in Amman, Jordan, where Palestinians from the West Bank were able to come, as well as in Gaza, where the authorities, the, the Palestinian authorities in Gaza did cooperate with them, as the PA did in the West Bank. Uh, but they also held public hearings in Geneva, where Israelis, including the mm -hmm. mayor of Ashkelon, uh, a, a resident of Sderot, came and testified what it had meant for them. I think there are some problems that remain with the call for, uh, for, for real accountability. One is that it ultimately, according to the Goldstone recommendations, will be put back to the Security Council, mm -hmm. which means the threat of a U.S. veto looms very high. The other is that he has put these calls in the context of what's known as complementarity, meaning that this international law should complement uh, existing national law and that the first crack, if you will, should go to Israel itself. So he says we should give Israel six months to convene credible investigative uh, um, efforts to hold accountable those who have committed violations. What's not so clear is if, for example, imagine Israel really did convene a, a war crimes hearing, but based on Israeli law, they may just find that mm. nothing that was done has been illegal. And then what happens? So there's some problems, but this is a huge step forward in making accountability the centerpiece. And putting the possibility of a referral to the International Criminal Court so high up in the report. Absolutely. How was it greeted at the UN today? Well, there was, it, it was fascinating. We literally walked into the room and, and were handed the summaries five minutes before Justice Goldstone walked out to begin. So no one had a chance to read anything. On the other hand, most of us knew what was likely to be in it. There was a lot of, of questioning about some of the particularities. I asked about the, the problem of, of lack of political will if we're still relying on the Security Council, even if it's after mm -hmm. this process. Uh, there was an Israeli who uh, accused Justice Goldstone of, of uh, being unfair, essentially. No one else seemed to abide by, <laughs> seemed to agree with that uh, direction of questioning. Uh, so there's a lot of questions that remain, but I think that there is no way, I mean, this, this, this report was put together not only by Justice Goldstone, but by four other eminent internationally respected lawyers from different parts of the world. There is, I think, no way that the credibility of this uh, of this investigation can be challenged. The question is going to be, how much pressure can we as civil society bring to bear on our governments 
to make it real, to make it happen. Very quickly, Phyllis, we've got about a minute, but this season sees a lot of transition at the United Nations. And while we often focus on the Security Council and what it will or will not do, um, there is the General Assembly. And the General Assembly is saying goodbye to a, an important leader, I think. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about the role of Father Miguel in the last uh, year. And last night at the is. UN, uh, Father Miguel de Scotto, who has been the General Assembly president for the last year, he gave his final speech. His term ended late last night. And in his speech, it was quite extraordinary. He talked about uh, some of the accomplishments, but he also talked about his frustration that he had not been able to move further, first on the economic questions. But he did, and I think it's important to recognize his role in history for making the role of the president of the General Assembly an important political leadership role, not simply a photo op, which is what it's always been. One of the things he did immediately with the emergence of the severity of the economic crisis internationally was to assert that the United Nations should be the centerpiece for dealing with that crisis, not the United States, not the so-called G8, not even the slightly bigger G20. And in fact, in his speech, he said, the G8 and the G20 will remain important minorities within the G192, <laughs> which refers to the number of, of countries that are members of the UN. That was crucial. But was he, he met also, in that desire? Has the no, not 192 yet, played a key role? Not yet, but <laughs> at least he put in place some institutional uh, mechanisms that if they are followed up on, again, it's the issue of political will, could make that possible. He ended with his frustration around Gaza. Mm. And he said that the powerful countries did not support his efforts to bring peace and to stop the slaughter in Gaza. And he went on to say that those who had most, who were most responsible to the people who were the victims, mm. and it was, un, it was not a surprise to anyone, he was speaking of the Palestinian Authority and their diplomats at the UN, were the reason that they had urged, and he, he gestured with his fingers, quote, caution. And he said, I could not understand why they would call for caution. And he went on to say, I hope they were right and I was wrong in pushing for a stronger resolution that, the, uh, that they kept saying, the solution is on its way and we shouldn't do anything to disrupt it. He said, I hope they were right and I was wrong because if not, we are in for a long and ugly time mm -hmm. of collaboration. It was a very difficult speech for him to make, a very powerful one, words that needed to be said. But most importantly, I think what the legacy of Father Miguel de Scotto will be is the notion that the president of the General Assembly is no longer simply a token photo op. It's a real leader. Phyllis Banas, thank you so much. From the Institute for thank Policy you. Studies and the author of that primer or primer on the Palestinian-Israel conflict, take a look. It's worth, worth a read and you'll get very smart very quick. Thanks so much.